first job we need to do is to take the back off. Um, you can get away with just taking this top grill out and sliding the chassis out that way, but uh, I actually prefer just to take the whole off. Um, it's not that many extra screws, and it gives you a lot more room to get the uh, to get the chassis out. So, without further ado, let's uh, get that off. Make sure you get all the ones on the bottom. There's uh, five along the bottom that you need to take out. We'll do it before we've had a missing one, and uh, it won't come off. I'd like to get these uh, get these little washers. They kind of stick to the Tolex, but. It's worth getting them off now so you don't lose them later. Right. Put the speaker for a sec. Next job, get the chassis out. Right, so I like to lay it down. It's just a bit easier to get the chassis out with it laid down. I've got to try and balance everything because, of course, it's going to drop down and your valves and everything are hanging from the bottom of the chassis. Um, so you don't want to end up clonking those on the speakers and damaging any of them because if they're in good working order still, there it's handy to keep them as spares anyway. So, um, so I've laid it down. I've just laid it on a pillow just to help protect the. Uh, front of the amp a little bit. In the back, as you can see the valves hanging down there, two transformers. As long as the valve as long as the amp's been off a while, there's nothing in this side of the amp that will cause you any issues. You can grab hold of these transformers perfectly safely uh, and we should use those to lift the chassis out of the cab. So let's get on with it and get the uh, get the four screws out. Grabbing the washers. Oh yeah, that one as well. That one can't often stick in there. There we are. So that's all four screws out. Simply. table ready to start work so we're going to change those I've had a bit of a play around with these preamps we've got a load of old spares um, changed one and two uh, did have some electro harmonics uh, 12x7s in there but they um, were quite old and actually microphonic or squealing a bit even with no signal going through them. So I changed those back to some JJ's, but I did like the sound of those 12A87s, so I might get myself a couple of new ones. Now you have to push these bear traps down, as they call them, I believe. Get hold of the base and just wiggle them out, and that's it. And these are Marshall branded. So these are the original valves that came with this amp, which are now two years old. So probably well worth changing them. And I believe the red logo and that code means they are basically rebranded JJ's, as far as I'm 
I can tell from what I've looked. In fact, it actually says JJ on the side. So there we go. Same matched pair. There we go. A little JJ logo, but they are Randy Marshall on the front. So, but well, there's a little code there, and if you go on the JVM forum, there's a really handy post that uh, has all these codes to tell you what valves are what, basically, in terms of their rebranded counterparts. So, gone for some. Electro harmonics, EL34s. There's a few options we could have gone with. Let's see, um, some more JJs, uh, which they do a, a couple of variants. The EL34, the EL34-2, the EL34-L, and there's a 6CA7 options that electro harmonics do, which are an alternative to an EL34. Go straight in, just buy us another same. Uh, or KT 77s, the same deal, go straight in, just buy us up the same. Pretty much. Right, so there's a, a little keyway. I don't think we're going to see that on the camera. Just there. There's a little keyway on the middle pin there on the middle plastic pin so that matches up with the keyway in the socket again just uh, pop him in not plugged into anything, I've not put the speaker load on yet, <coughs> I've not even got the mains plug plugged in, we we'll just get these valves in and then we'll flip him over because we need to get to the inside, get to the guts of it and uh, we'll just plug the speaker back in and uh, power him up, in fact it'll need to power up and warm up for a while, at that point I will Go make a cup of tea, I think. Have a brew. Okay. Two new valves in. That's in. We can flip the chassis over. And now we've got the gummins. This is the side you have to be careful with. And by all means, if you're not confident, don't attempt it. Because there are things in here that'll do you some mischief. Filter caps. That's that's like the danger area. That bit there. Um, so you've got your tra one of your transformers that side. That'd be the power transformer because that's coming in off of the um, power socket. And then your output transformer, which goes to the back of your speaker sockets. Uh, and then just lots of components basically. So over here you can see your preamp sockets where they're um, fitted to the circuit board. Then on the back here we've got our two new power valves sockets. And just down here, con one, connector one. That's where we're going to be connecting our multimeter to take bias readings. And then there's the two pots to adjust the bias reading so that we get them as close as possible and, and at the right reading so we, we're aiming around 30 millivolts milliamp, milliamps is, um, which we'll read off of our multimeter um, and that's pretty much it to make it accurate you ideally want to want to know what the plate voltage is and we'll measure that off of this socket or off of these sockets and pin 3 and then that'll tell us what the plate voltage is, and we do a little calculation to tell us what percentage of the dissipation we're at. And uh, you know, 34s uh, run at 25 watts each, and we want a max dissipation of 70%, so anything from 70 and below is good. So you can measure 
the voltage drop off of these screen resistors and then take that off of this measurement and that will give you an accurate figure. Uh, another way, and I, it is fairly close, is just to times this by 0 .0, 0 .1, uh, by 0.9. Um, not so you get 90% of what this figure is, and that's uh, roughly the right sort of um, figure, and you, you know you're fairly safe. Um, so I'm going to get this connected up and uh, say so get it warmed up and make a cup of tea. Okay, so now it's been on now for. <coughs> about 15 minutes warming up. I've had most of a cup of tea, which is a bit rubbish because I've run out of milk. Uh, so it's just a black tea. Well, actually, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do first is just do a, a quick measurement of the um, uh, from the bias probes just to see where we're at, and then we'll do the plate bias. So what we'll be set up: 200 millivolts DC. Where it needs to be set. Got the crocodile clip on. Pin three, so the middle pin, and we're going to measure off of the uh, outside pins. Okay, so make sure we're off standby. There we go, we're off standby. sorts of numbers going on. What's going on there? 45.9, 46 on one side and 30 on the other side. 31. So let's just give that a tweak. Turn one side down a bit. So they don't need a lot. <coughs> They're quite sensitive, so let's just uh, let's do this without the camera in hand. Or the phone, should I say. So that's still that down to 43.7, so a bit more. Which is a bit hot on that side. I think Marshall's recommended value on the 50 watts, this is a 50 watt head, <coughs> hence only being two valves, for those who don't know. Marshall's recommended value is about 30 millivolts per side, or milliamps. Alright, so we're down to 30 now on that side, on the other side is at 33. So what I'm going to do is make those roughly the same. As in, try and get that to be about 30 as well. I had a DSL 50 watt head before. A lot easier because the biasing probes were on the on the back of the amp. You didn't even have to, have to take the uh, the chassis out. Um, however, with those, the trim pots affected each other. So if you went down with one, the other one went up, and vice versa. So yeah, it was a, it was a Quite a, quite a balancing act to get those uh, to match. But these just seem to affect one side or the other uh, singularly. Interestingly, you can kind of see on the circuit board, I don't know if you noticed when I was doing a shot, I'll do another shot in a bit, but there are, <coughs> you can see spaces for the um, for the other two valves that you'd have in, the, in, a, in a 100 watt. But obviously there's uh, some other components that are missing as well. So you can see that the, the main circuit board is pretty much the same for both amps. There we go, 30 on both sides. So the next thing, what I'm going to do next is just check the plate voltage and see where that's at. And then do the little calculation to see what what wattage we're running at, what percentage we're running at max, of max dissipation. I don't know if it would make any difference staying on the pin 3 but I've always done it off the chassis. I don't do the measurements for the bias if you do from the chassis will be slightly different from if you do them from pin 3. Um, so it's you know you definitely want to measure your bias voltages from there it would seem. Uh, and then we want to Put the put them 
voltmeter up to six, 600 volts DC. So there we are. And then we'll go ahead and measure. So, back off standby. And we're measuring from pin three. So, one, two, three. And we've got 492 volts of plate plate voltage on, on V2, which is, as you can see, V1 is empty, V2 is one of our tubes, V3 is the other one of our tubes that we've got in, and then you can just see V4 is empty again. So the two outer tubes are empty, which would be 100 watt. So if you had 100, if this is 100 watt amp, um, this pot would uh, adjust the bias for these two valves and this pot would adjust the bias for these two valves and I think that yeah there's another screen grid resistor would go there and there and I think there was another resistor yeah R33 is missing it would seem so yeah a few, few extra components to go in there with the 100 watt and of course the, out, the, the transformers would be different as well uh, to handle that extra Cool, so and we we're going to measure pin 3 of our other output tube, so pin 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so we go in there, and again likewise, 491, so pretty close in the plate voltages are almost identical. So now then, uh, we've got, I'm going to have to not video the rest of this bit because I'll have to use the calculator on my phone. 492, 491. In fact, what we will do is just go double check the bias voltages again and then fill those in and then we'll do the calculation. So, uh, I can't stand by a sec. Let's put my uh, probe back on pin 3. Very careful not to touch anything you're not supposed to. Right, multimeter back on 200 millivolts DC. Uh, back off standby, otherwise, you won't get any measurements. There we go, 30.1 and 29.7. So, 30.1, 29.7, simple bit of maths, but because I'm rubbish at maths it's better to do it with a calculator, so 492 times 0 0.030, 14.76 watts. Okay, so that's what wattage we're using, and if we divide that by 25, that gives us our percentage uh, of dissipation, which is 56%, uh, 57%. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room. If we go up, the plate voltage measurements usually come down a bit, and then you can go out and find that find that balance. As I say, we haven't taken into account for the voltage drop across these screen resistors so that will affect our bias measurement it'll actually lower that slightly so if we take we could measure those and they will probably be uh, about two or three uh, volts you should subtract that away from your bias voltages that you're getting on the pins at con one um, or a safer way of doing it rather than messing about further because the trouble is these resistors are quite close to the pins on the on the tubes I, when I've done it in the past I've just had it all turned off and connected up the crocodile clips and gone that way that is probably the safer and then you obviously turn it back on to measure uh, that's the safest way of doing it in and out but obviously there's a lot of faffing about in and out with stuff so if you take 30.1 uh, times that by 0.9 gives you 27.09 so if we take that and do our calculation 
So 492 times 0.027, and we're running at 13.2 watts. Time, uh, no, sorry, divide that by 25, and we're at 53%. So there we go. Some figures. Let's crank up the the bias a little bit. We'll maybe go up to 32, 33. Recheck the plate voltages and see what we've got. So we're on 200 millivolts, amps off of standby. Other in, uh, note of, you know, to make is that uh, don't have two hands inside the chassis when you're doing this job. Use one hand. I've got a, oh, I used to use a great big thing that was all insulated up through a driver, but it's a bit heavy and cumbersome. You need something that's fairly light because the pots are very sensitive. They only need a very tiny little turn each time to make a big difference. Um, so I've got this tiny little screwdriver. I haven't got any electrical insulated screwdrivers <coughs> uh, about. Um, so I've got this tiny little screwdriver flat blade and then insulated the shaft of it with the, with the insulation tape uh, just so that the very end is, is showing. You know, insulate the as much of the metal as possible so you've got the least amount showing um, to avoid any accidents basically. So we're just going to tweak these up just a smidge. Like I say, it's very, very sensitive. You don't need to move them much. Then we're going to go back in. We're on the middle pin with our with our ground. Oops. And we've got 32.4 on one side. And 33... Yeah, 33 on the other side. So I'm going to just tweak the other one. I'm going to try and make them both 33. And then we'll re-measure the, the grids. And, so it just takes the tiniest of tiniest of touches on those on those trim pots just to get the, uh, the adjustment. So that's gone to thirty three point five now. So I'm gonna go back slightly because it was just a smidge under thirty three. It's almost like you just almost rest your screwdriver into it and just put a little bit of pressure on it. That's sometimes just enough. It's a fiddly little job. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Just, to, but the important thing is you take your time and not not to rush because rushing is when you'll end up having a little accident, and that's not what you want. I've been a bit pedantic trying to get these exactly perfectly the same, but you know, the job's worth doing, etc, etc. There we go, 33. You know, some people run these really quite hot, <coughs> and um, I don't know if I've yeah, Marshall recommend 30 millivolts per side. Um, but you know, measuring the plate voltage, as you can see from the calculations, that's quite quite cool in terms of uh, how, you know what limits it's allowed to use. So let's have a, put this back on 600 volts so we can measure the plates. 490. So again, calculator out. Thirty to uh, sorry, four ninety times naught point naught three three gives us sixteen point one watts. Sixteen point one divide by twenty five. Sorry, gives us sixty four percent. It times it by ninety percent, so it's thirty three times point nine gives us twenty nine point seven. So around about thirty. This is 14.21, divide that by 25, gives us 56. So we're kind of back to where we were, uh, but not as cold as we were with those. So we could go up a smidge more. Maybe we'll just try that, go up to maybe 35 on the side. You know, it's worth a try. This amp, this amp does not get used hard. In fact, 
rarely go <coughs> very high in the master volume anyway, it's mostly used at home. There we go. Back on con three, uh, con one, pin three. He's saying con three. That's something else. Uh, back to two hundred millivolts DC. So we're at thirty-three, aren't we? So let's give that a tweak. Little tweak up. With the DSL with the pins on the back it was quite easy to get two crocodile clips on there just had a I don't think they were any further further spaced out or anything like that but it's obviously there was nothing else to touch but we've got like I say a couple of biggish resistors there that I don't want to be kind of catching with anything if I can help it I'm going to be shorting anything out so and there's not a lot of room I suppose you could get another crocodile clip on there if you're careful um, and then you can adjust the pot and watch it change on the on the multimeter. That's thirty six. Probably I want to go thirty five and then do the calculation and see what that's like. Can okay, I recheck the plates plate voltage? But you know, once you learn to do this, it's uh, it's you know, it's great because it's obviously something that you can uh, save yourself some money on in terms of repair servicing costs but obviously at the same time you've got to be careful not to damage anything inside the amp by touching the wrong things and it gives you an opportunity to go have a look at what things are like inside when from time to time make sure there's no scorching or burnt out components although I think you'd probably know about it with regards to how the amp sounds 35.6 35 35.5 cool I think it'll be the same no reason it shouldn't be it's going to ground 4.86 just under 68 percent so it's probably nudging the envelope a little bit um, but bearing in mind we're running at actually 31.5 so if we times that 486 times 0 0.031 15 watts divide that by 25 we're at 60 percent so yeah should be well in. You can go a bit cooler if you want. It's uh, that's a personal preference. So turn the amp off. <coughs> get this. This is what I mean. It's awkward to get your your probes in. I measure 20 volts DC. This is a low, low amount. Amp on, off of standby, and then I use the other probe to go in from this side. Yeah, three. I'll let that settle down. Three, four, four point two, four point three. So yeah, yeah, times in your bias measurements at the at the pins and then times on it by 0.9 gives you about the right amount of voltage drop which um, you know that method was um, advised by the, uh, the amp designer so you know it makes sense that it, it adds up um, we can just go and try the other side okay so that's that before you attend this just 
do as much research as you can. Like I said, this video is not a how-to, it's just showing you me doing mine. Uh, so, like I say, it's very, very dangerous to be poking around in these amps. As I say, there's lots of components that high, hold lots of high voltages, and if you start poking things, a transformer as well, you can, you know, there's lots of lots of ways of doing yourself some damage. Um, it is a simple, straightforward job. Lots of people do it. There's a nice connector there. You put your probes on there. Negative or ground goes to the middle probe, and then your two outer probes you use for your for your your red wire. And then just adjust those pots again. A nice light screwdriver that's insulated, just the, the you know the smallest amount showing at the ends. Yeah. Disclaimer. Do not try this at home unless you are absolutely sure you know what you're doing. Because you can kill yourself basically. Uh, and nobody wants that. Cool. pulled uh, COM3 wire off, so maximum negative feedback. <laughs> Basically, with that plug, with that plug taken off. Uh -huh. 